Have you ever thought, I wonder what everything that Z170 has to offer on a motherboard looks like? Well, this is pretty much it. Stick around for the full review of the Maximus 8 Extreme motherboard from ASUS. <laughs> Check out our website at techteamgb.co.uk for more info on both this and many other products, and also up-to-date news on all things tech. Stick around for this awesome video. So this board is incredible and comes with a lot of cool stuff. First of all, this fan extender board allows you to connect a lot more fans and temperature sensors uh, with this kind of just extra cable and stuff like that, which is quite cool. You get some extra temperature sensors as well as uh, eight SATA cables, two SLI bridges. This front panel, a uh, sort of uh, five and a quarter inch bay that allows you to put the OC panel you can see there um, in the front to be able to see your temperatures, fan speeds and uh, voltages and stuff like that. But if you take it out of the front panel, you can use it to overclock your system which is really awesome. You plug it in via the ROG extension header and cable uh, and a SATA power cable and then you can, as I said, use it to overclock your PC, change the multiplier, base clock, voltages, literally anything you like, set it up and it's actually pretty easy to use um, as long as you sort of take a look through the manual first. Um, you can also open up the bottom and uh, plug in your fans directly into it which is quite cool as well. Now the motherboard itself is laid out really well with four PC, uh, four X6 or X16 sized PCI lanes, the top one being X16 and the rest being X8, technically allowing for a four way SLI or crossfire. Up the top you have four DDR4 uh, DIMM slots and the socket 1151 socket. Um, the uh, sort of heat set or the sort of uh, cover over the rear I.O. is actually plastic and can be a little bit flimsy but the actual heat sinks for the VRM and power phases are awesome and uh, just really beefy and really just generally pretty cool. Down at the bottom you can see the easy plug if you want to overclock your graphics cards and add a bit more power to the board and a Thunderbolt header, an RG extension header, uh, as well as the extended fan header uh, if you want to plug in that cool board, a 32 gigabit per second M.2 slot and the uh, different buttons for BIOS switching and SLI crossfire modes which is quite cool too. Up in the top right hand corner you've got uh, all the hardware buttons including dip switches to turn on and off PCI lanes and check your voltages and the two USB 3.0 uh, internal front panel headers. Um, also something to note is that the motherboard is actually technically longer than ATX so if you want to install this in a relatively tight case um, do check in that it will fit first. Also, something really cool is you get a U.2 connector if you want to connect M NVMe SSDs as well as SATA Express as well. The Rario has plenty of different buttons for clear CMOS, um, USB 3 ports, USB 2 ports, a killer Wi-Fi solution, uh, it's just awesome. USB Type-C and 3.1 which is awesome, they've actually completely done away with USB 2 on this board so that's pretty cool. And a really nice audio solution, 7.1 with SPDF from the Supreme Effects uh, chip down the bottom which actually happens to light up red. Which which is pretty cool. Now this OC panel allows you to see a lot of cool things and overclock on the fly as I said so um, basically you can select different things uh, in the sort of menu set and change the, the v-core, um, your DRAM voltage and uh, clock speed, you can change the multiplier or the base clock, um, you can change the uh, voltage for your graphics cards as well so that's just insanely cool and really nice that you can do this uh, sort of all uh, from an external device. Also something really cool is that the chipset heatsink lights up with a red LED and is in this kind of glowing breathing pattern as well. Now the BIOS is actually really good, um, a lot of cool features in here, it's very easy for beginners but has all the advanced features you might expect if you are someone who's more of a professional overclocker, so that's pretty cool too. So this board is insane, it's got literally everything you could ask for and probably more um, and it's just incredible. Now obviously this is the cream of the crop and just uh, generally as, as they call it an extreme board, there is a lot of things on here that most people will never use, don't want and all that sort of stuff and that's fine. That's why it's priced to be, you know, the incredible beast that it is. If you want to compare it to something like the MSI X Power board I checked out last week, um, there's around about £100 price difference at time of filming uh, and that does actually kind of show. Now obviously the MSI board is great for overclocking but it wasn't really an all, a great all-rounder with things uh, missing like USB Type-C but with this one you've got an incredible uh, package worth of stuff, obviously U.2 for NVMe SSDs and M.2 if you want to put, uh, put M.2 NVMe, uh, NVMe SSDs in, um, you've got SATA Express, you've got Thunderbolt, you've got amazing uh, Wi-Fi with uh, three ports on the back, um, you've got uh, USB Type-C as well as 3.1. Um, I'm pretty sure they did entirely away with uh, USB 2 on this, so that's 
interesting. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, you've got uh, two USB 3 front panel headers. Um, you've got great overclocking features with the OC panel, uh, which you can either put in a five and a quarter inch bay or use to overclock from the external device. You can plug fans into it directly and control them that way. Um, the BIOS is great with uh, kind of features that are really easy for a beginner to use, but if you are an advanced um, you know, overclocker or something like that, then you have all the features you would expect from that. Um, and while it's not an every man's board, which is, as I said, why it's priced that way, it is certainly an awesome board. And if you're looking for the cream of the crop and, and possibly the best Z170 board that there is currently, this is possibly the one to check out. Now, in terms of pros and cons, there really isn't many cons besides, obviously, the, the, the limiting factor, which is price. Uh, but, you know, you've got great uh, features. It was very feature-rich, so the great I.O. and um, great general connectivity. I actually quite like the styling with the glowing heatsink, uh, the chipset heatsink, and the general uh, look of the top end is actually quite nice as well. Um, only thing I would take note is that the shroud that goes over the rear I.O. is plastic and is still not quite that, all that well attached. So if you do try and pick it up by the, the plastic heatsink, um, you might end up sort of breaking it off. So I'd quite like to see that either just more secure or possibly just a, a, a more metal design or something like that. Um, but other than that, there really isn't much to, to kind of question about it. Um, in terms of scoring, it's going to be a 4 from 5 money because while it really isn't the cheapest board, you do get all of the features that are possible on the 170 at this point in time um, and it's just generally pretty awesome. Um, in terms of, fun uh, sort of performance, it's going to be a 5 because most motherboards are pretty much the same now. Functionality has to be a 5 because it's just insane. Um, styling, I'm going to have to give it a 5 as well, although it's not as pretty as the formula board they just announced. Um, it is certainly a good looking board and uh, bear in mind that it is slightly longer as well so if you are looking to put it in a relatively small case a uh, small ATX case just check that out um, but yeah uh, in terms of Titan BB score it's gonna have to be a five I think it's a awesome board um, and it's you know just generally really cool and there isn't really that much wrong with it so I think it's gonna have to get the top tier award like seriously if you're looking for the cream of the crop motherboard the best that you can get check this one out that's that's all I have to say if you disagree with me, feel free to let me know why in the comments down below, as I'm sure you will. If you do or don't or enjoy the video or didn't, feel free to click one of the buttons that represent your opinion and let me know in the comments down below too. Uh, subscribe for more tech videos, uh, reviews and all that sort of stuff. Check out some of their videos, hopefully over there on Facebook and Twitter for more updates on videos and all that sort of stuff. And as I said, subscribe for more awesome cool stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.